Now in uh, session number seven, and this is called endodontics, or what we call root canal therapy. And I'm going to ask a question out there. Why would somebody need to have root canal therapy? Anybody? Pain. Somebody said pain. Oh, that's one of the reasons. And Kevin, something is insulting the tooth and it's attacking the tooth. It's starting to break down from the inside now. So inside the tooth, we have, we're going to look at the anatomy. The blood vessels and all the little lymphatics are going to be inside this thing called the root canal system. And the root canal system is made up of the pulp chamber, which is the top portion that's within the crown portion of the tooth, and the root canal itself, which is slender, goes down into the roots of the tooth. And at the beginning of the root canal, on the chewing surface, we have something called a pulp horn. You hear the term pulp comprising the blood vessels, the lymphatics, the nerve tissue. The pulp is what expands and, and, and gets sick when there's an insult, when there's decay. So as a root canal specialist or a dentist, you've got to start here to get at the infection. So we start with the pulp horns. Now, today we're going to make access in here, gain access, make a little hole, and start to discover that there are two canals to this tooth. It's a bicuspid. So there's two cusps and two canals, and two roots. So we have to identify those two. There's one on the buccal side and one on the lingual side. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Now, if we go a little bit further on gathering information about the anatomy, because you have to visualize this in your mind more so than, than being able to see it in real life. Don't forget, this tooth is going to be in bone, ligament, and gum tissue. And the only way you're going to see that is through an x-ray. Okay, so we're not going to take x-rays today, but if any of you can get a chance, do try to go and see what this is all about with an x-ray. I don't have a visual for you today, but we have plenty of diagrams. Within the tip of the root, I'll go from the pulp horn to the tip of the root, we have, there's anatomy that you have to understand here. There's a little thing called an apical constriction. So when a tooth finally forms, when the adult tooth finally forms, the last portion of the tooth that develops is this apical foramen. And it, it, there's a little hole at the tip of the root. And right before that, about a quarter millimeter, there's a little constriction. And when a tooth finally gives up, this material, this pulp tissue, starts to necrose. And it wants to vent, it builds up fluids. And there's a partial pressure law that states when fluids build up, in a closed environment, like a soda bottle, you know, with, with warm soda, you shake it, there's pressure builds up. That pressure wants to relieve somewhere, and it wants to go out the tip of the root. So it makes it past this little, you know, think of it as the, uh, the Panama Canal, you know, this little isthmus, it's a doorway. We have to preserve that constriction today. We have to think like a, a root canal specialist. We want to preserve that. We don't want to remove that, it's very important. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that. You have other things, like in a river, we have tributaries, lateral canals. They all of a sudden, they branch off the main root canal and they go to the side of the tooth. Almost impossible to treat. What we've done in dentistry is we were able to place um, soft materials inside the canal and seal the inside of the canal. We try to seal the lateral canals as well with cements, Another material is called gutta percha. I don't know if you've heard of gutta percha. It's a soft rubber material. That is the material that's used to seal the canal. All right, so, and we'll talk about that. So, here's this root canal system. You've got the chamber, you've got the canal, you've got the apical constriction, the apical foramen. Um, the, the orifices are the two little openings that that go into the, the top portion of the canal that you'll need to identify today. 
Let me back up a second and talk about what is a tooth abscess and why is, you know, why is it so important to identify that versus a gum abscess. Well, if the nerve goes and it stops firing in the tooth, and the nutrients are no longer going to the tooth, so basically we call it a dead tooth. The fluids and the gases are now being released through this apical foramen and into bone. Patients are perceiving pain as that pressure that's building up. Someone asked me, uh, if the tooth is numb, or is, is, is dead, do you still need to numb the tooth up? And my answer is yes, you still have to give anesthetic to numb the tooth, even though it's a dead canal and it's not firing, because when you do a root canal procedure, you're going to clean a little bit past the apex, and you're gonna go near the bone, and the patient may feel that. And also, there may be some material inside that still is alive. It's always the that. Anyway, um, there are instruments that we use, and we're going to walk through that when I go over to the microscope, uh, and I'll show you each one of those. So the first thing I want to do is show you an actual tooth that already had a root canal. And as I do that, I'm going to discuss all the armamentarium you're going to need. What you need to have out is your root canal explorer, your periodontal probe, your mirror, and then we have a, a small measuring device called an endodontic ruler. Some of them are blue, some of them are red. Have all that out. Now each of you has a tooth, number 12, which is the bicuspid. And we're going to start making our access in a few minutes. So everybody have their instruments out? Okay. Well, um, a few more things before I go and sit down with the microscope. You're going to have a sheet to fill out today, and it's it's already in your in with your handouts. So put your name on it, and each one of these <coughs> steps is going to test your proficiency on how you do your root canal. So I'm going to need to know some of this information. Um, the root canal preparation itself, is basically what we're doing is we're, we're gaining access to the pulp horns, we're going into the orifices, we're taking an instrument called an endodontic explorer, and we're finding these places. And then we're going to use something called a root canal file. And there are files that are very small, and they graduate in size all the way up to very large files. And the type of procedure and technique <coughs> is called recapitulation. It's a big word. And let's see, you know, it's, it's something that you're not going to be familiar with unless you're doing root canals. It doesn't relate anything to fillings. It doesn't relate anything to crown preparation. It's, it's, it's a root canal term. And what it means is we want to use a small file, and we want to clean all this out, and we want to be able to go past the apical constriction but not destroy it or rip it. And we want to use a term called paint. I want to be able to go through a make sure that I can keep this area open and keep the filings from clogging up this constriction. So recapitulation is a term used where you use a small file, you irrigate using, here we're going to use water, and then you use the next file size, and then you'll clean that out, and then you'll drop back to the original small file, clean it, and then go back to the next size, so it's kind of like you start with a small, go to the next size, come back, check patency, go back, come back, make sure that you're, you're still clear, go back. And in the meantime, you're measuring the length of the root. Well, here we have the tooth in our hand, so it's easy to do that. Why is working length so important, the length of the tooth? Well, I want to make sure I don't remove the apical constriction. So we'll document the working length first make sure we don't go past that. What is the working length? By definition, for us, it's going to be that length from the, the tip of the cusp all the way to the end of the root. Okay, and in our type of dot teeth, it's flat. So it's going to be where the opening is. All right? You write that number down and then you subtract a quarter millimeter from that. That'll be your apical constriction and that's where you want to end. 
We want to end out the apex. So that number is important, and pretty much it's going to be the same number with everybody. All right. Once we get established the working length and the patency file, now you're good to go. And now you do the recapitulation until you reach a final file that feels nice and snug in here, right to your construction, and you have that working length. What happens to working length as we recapitulate and make this thing called the root canal a little bit wider and we're cleaning it, is we find out that the length of this initial working length starts to get smaller and smaller. It might, it might be smaller by a quarter of a millimeter or a half a millimeter. It all depends on you know, you know, your techniques and how wide you make this root canal uh, diameter. So that's why I put this up. You're going to find that you'll start with a very constricted canal and it'll get wider and wider as you recapitulate. And then all of a sudden what happens is that curve in the tooth gets to be straighter and straighter and all of a sudden now your file is straight and it's also a shorter distance. So think about that. The technique of recapitulation is a quarter turn to the right and then back three quarters turn and pull the, pull the file out. Now files have a unique shape to them. And when you look at it, all all what a file is, it's a piece of, of steel, you know, or, or titanium. And what they do is on one end they, they grab it and on the other they hold it and they twist it and spiral it so that it looks like a coil, you know, with cutting edges that are almost razor sharp. And they all go in one direction. So to cut something you go clockwise to the right to release to go left. So we go a little bit right and a, a lot left, three-quarter counterclockwise, and pull it out and then irrigate. Now in your boxes you should also have a small syringe. And if not, we'll have to get you a you have small syringe. It should have like a blue material in it. That's your irrigation material. You only need like a drop at a time. So during recapitulation, while you're switching your files, you want to keep the proper lubrication going on inside the tube. Otherwise, you're going to build up something called mud. In real life, it's called dental mud. Here, it's going to be plastic filings. And you're going to constrict and block the apex. You don't want to block the apex. You want to remain paint. And again, the word paint means being clear and communication with the outside of the tube, the inside is clear. We don't want to rip the apex. We don't want to rip the apical construction. Nor do we want to create ledges in the inside of the tube. And so in the demo today, I'll show you how to gain access, how to do it right, how to remove some ledges, some pulp horns, and some, some things that block us from getting from doing a real good job in the root canal. As you open up the, the root canal access, it becomes more of an oval shape. So we'll be using the round bird, the number two round bird, to penetrate and to drop in.